become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here. Today we are going to look at a variety of barbell curls that were used in the silver era for developing the biceps. This video is inspired by an article I recently read written by Abe Goldberg, pictured here performing the swinging curl. Now Abe Goldberg possessed phenomenal ribcage development which I featured in a previous video, but also had excellent arm development and he had overall a real Herculean physique about himself. Now, due to the lack of equipment during the Silver Era, the Silver Era bodybuilders experimented with a variety of grips, positions and styles of curling to develop their biceps up to about 18 inches in size and naturally too. So let's explore some of their unusual ways and techniques of barbell curling as uh, practiced in the Silver Era of bodybuilding. Now, whenever it talks about the biceps, um, there is a universal appeal to the biceps muscle. It is easily one of the most admired body parts. And whether you are a beginner or an advanced trainee, when you judge someone else's physique and you go to a lifter, you know, do you lift or whatever, one of the first things any lifter does is flex their arm. I mean, check out here that the girls are just drooling over Steve Reeves, lucky bastard, as, as he flexes his, his wonderful physique and they're just wanting to probe and touch him, right? And so it, any lifter will just flex that arm when they want to get some uh, ego satisfaction, basically. And it really is a sign of a lift. If you've got big guns, you know, Sun's out, gun's out, right? So, um, and as they say, the, the curls uh, get the girls. <laughs> so, um, everyone loves training arms. And even, you know, when, when it comes to arms day, it's very exciting. You get this great pump. And uh, there's nothing like walking around with your sleeves full. Sleeves full of muscle, right? Now, besides the universal appeal of biceps, um, as mentioned earlier, uh, the Silver Era bodybuilders, the, the, the real pioneers, when one has to say, after the um, Bronze Era of strongmen, uh, these guys experimented with only very limited exercise equipment. They, they crafted their bodies with uh, barbells and dumbbells, chest expanders, as I've explained before, lap pulley machines, very, very rudimentary machines, and of course, the chinning bar. They would also vary their positions, uh, performing the curls standing, seated, or lying. And that's what today's focus is. Today's we're going to actually look at um, barbell curling specifically, and the different types and varieties of techniques used to develop the biceps in the Silver Era. So this article actually showed at least nine different ways of curling, but to be honest, when you do the counting, it, there's way more than that. Um, the first one that is the most obvious style of barbell curling is the standard barbell curl, which we most of us know how to do. It is the best beginner exercise because it really does put on a lot of mass in the biceps. And it should be performed uh, relatively slowly, not necessarily explosively. It is not an explosive motion like Olympic lifting. It is a bodybuilding exercise and should be performed as strict as possible, starting with the barbell at the thighs and curling the barbell up to the shoulders and going slowly down on the negative. Now from the basic barbell curl, we can actually start going into the different variations. For example, one can wear a very the, the grip going narrow to target the outside of the biceps or the long head. And uh, if you obviously change the grip now to a wide grip, you would uh, target the short uh, head of the biceps or the inner biceps. Overall, as mentioned earlier, the, the, regardless of the, of the grip, the barbell curl is mainly used for beginners and even for advanced trainees. It is a, a basic movement that will always deliver mass. That's what it's great for. Now, besides changing the grip with the palms facing forward, you can also change the position of the hand by having the palms now facing away to, to uh, perform the reverse curl, which not only obviously uh, um, hits the upper arm, but the lower arm too. So it adds thickness into the forearms. It is a great exercise for actually developing the forearm. And of course, the upper arm will be hit specifically 
the, the muscle that is hit the most is the brachialis, which actually sits underneath the biceps and actually gives the upper arm an overall uh, greater appearance of thickness and even peak because it can actually push the biceps up. This was something that um, Larry Scott used to preach about, actually. He used to love doing reverse curls. Now, one cannot talk about the Silver Era without talking about Olympic-style lifting, and the repetition clean, believe it or not, as put in the article by Abe Goldberg, is actually, one could say, an advanced form of reverse curling. If you think about the clean, that you basically deadlift the bar right off the floor and lift it up, to your shoulders, in order to do so, you have to bend the arms. You have to bend the arms at the elbow like you would in a reverse curl. And because you are using ridiculous poundages, we're talking about 200 pounds at least. Some, you know, some people are, are, are cleaning 300 pounds. Um, these enormous weights um, obviously mean that this is a very advanced style of training, right? And therefore, would be an, considered an advanced biceps exercise. Um, weightlifters have great arm development simply because they do so many cleans and uh, the author of this article dares the advanced trainee to try this repetition clean for developing enormous biceps and I really think that's a great idea and probably one that is not practiced at all nowadays. The standing curl on the incline bench is quite similar to the preacher curl and I would dare to say it's actually a little bit harder because the arms are definitely at this uh, 45 degree angle. That is, of course, if the incline bench is set at 45 degrees. The preacher curl tends to be a little bit more steeper, the angle, and therefore the curl would be a little bit more easier and the weight um, would go up faster. But the use of an incline bench would be way stricter. And so a very interesting form of exercising the biceps. This was well before the preacher curl was actually, de uh, the preacher bench was actually developed. Um, so you, you would stand behind an incline board or bench. Your upper arms would actually rest tightly onto the incline bench and you would curl from this position as shown in the diagram here. Abe Goldberg performing the uh, standing curl on an incline bench. Now we've seen uh, Steve Reeves perform curls on an incline bench but he actually increased the range of motion by using dumbbells. The lying curl on an incline bench using a barbell is slightly different in that the barbell actually rests on your thighs and so there's, is, there is less of a range of motion and one would curl from this position. Um, this less, lesser range of motion actually allows a greater amount of weight to be used and also a barbell would allow that as well because there is greater stability with a barbell than with two dumbbells. One can also vary the grip going narrow or wide. Uh, this is a great variation to the standing barbell curl, the lying curl on an incline bench. Now we have some last two exercises recommended in this particular article which I really like and the half curl from the rack is an excellent one. Um, yes, you would go to a squat rack, you would have to use a squat rack for this and uh, I know there's a, a thing going on in gyms these days where you're not supposed to curl at the squat rack but for this uh, particular exercise you do and if anyone tells you why you're doing it it's because the silver era bodybuilders did it damn it it's a partial curl so it's a half curl you would set the stand uh, basically at around uh, your hip height and you would unrack the bar to perform a half curl so basically you want to start around your hip or somewhere in between your shoulders and your thighs and because it is a partial mo uh, movement you can actually use enormous weights and build tremendous power in your arms uh, because you are not doing the full range of motion you are you are only doing a partial movement finally we come to what i believe is one of the secrets of the silver era when it comes to curling with barbells and that is the swinging barbell curl i covered it recently in uh, my video on power exercises for developing ligament tendon and muscular strength this is a very advanced form of barbell curling, a favorite of Clarence Ross, Alan Steffen, and believe it or not, Leroy Colbert. I've been asked to do videos on Leroy Colbert. This is one of his favorite exercises. So for those of you fans of Leroy Colbert, you are starting to learn a little bit now about his form of barbell curling. Um, it is advanced, as I mentioned. It actually um, is 
it requires the use of very heavy weight and therefore one needs to cheat a little bit. You actually, using a little bit of momentum, swing the bar up and you don't stop what you normally would with a cheat curl uh, or with a standard barbell curl, which is in front of your shoulders, no. As you can see, Abe Goldberg here swings the barbell all the way up to the top of his chest and his shoulders like as if he's going to perform a front squat. Now this causes an incredible cramp in the biceps and causes them to peak up. And this is one of, again, a favorite of Leroy Colbert. And when you read his, his uh, writings and techniques on bicep curling, he used to love doing this particular uh, movement because it actually works a second part or a second action of the biceps. A lot of people know that the biceps supinate the forearm, that they bend the, um, yeah, so supinate, that's right, they supinate the forearm, they, it bends the lower arm into the upper arm, but a lot of people don't know that the bicep also has a third action and that is to bring the arm up towards the shoulder. And it works this, this action particularly well under very heavy weight. And so it, it provides a new stimulus to the bicep. And um, in doing so, it also uh, promotes a higher peak to your biceps. This is according to Leroy Colbert, at least. So the swing in barbell curl is presented here by Abe Goldberg. Again, you would start as you normally would with a standard barbell curl. That is the barbell at your thighs. And using a little bit of momentum, you would heave the barbell up, swing it up, all the way up um, to your shoulders, to the top of your, your chest, and then slowly bring the barbell down on the negative, really working that negative. And um, this is a great exercise, a real secret from the silver era. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on the different variety of barbell curls that was practiced in the silver era. Here we have Abe Goldberg, as mentioned earlier, who had phenomenal rib cage development and a phenomenal chest but also sported some pretty amazing biceps as shown here. If you've enjoyed the video and learned something, I really do hope that you can incorporate some of these exercises, whether you're a beginner or an advanced trainee. If you've enjoyed watching the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't to the Golden Era Bookworm. Thank you for watching and leave me a comment. If you'd like to support my work, please donate via PayPal or become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash Golden Era Bookworm. We have an online library of photos, articles, and books on the silver, golden, and bronze era of bodybuilding. Uh, if you'd like to purchase some of the courses that I've scanned and uploaded online, please visit goldenerabookworm.wixsite.com forward slash website. This is the Golden Era Bookworm. Bye for now. Visit goldenerabookworm.wixsite.com forward slash website for courses from the bronze and silver era of bodybuilding. I just want to recommend this phenomenal book, Vince's Secret Locker, volume number two by Carl Coyne. I've been looking at this for about four weeks and I can't put it down. If you get a chance, check it out. He also has a part one that I, I highly recommend also. Uh, Vince was the trainer of the stars and had an amazing, interesting gym that today there's still on equipment like, uh, like it around. It was all made out of wood. Uh, he'll be on our radio show coming up probably in the next couple weeks or so. Have a great day, and again, highly recommend this book.